All right, blue, black, scarab, god, mid-range. We've got a really healthy mix of favorites from Arena as well as new powerful cards. Thought Seize. This is an instant format staple. This card sees play and everything from Modern and Pioneer all the way back to Legacy. Um, just good, efficient, disruption. Um, costs you a little bit of life, but definitely worth being able to punch through whatever your opponent is doing. This card lets you generate double spell turns early, which is really nice. Um, we've got things like Meyer Triton, as well as Gifted Aetherborn, as creatures that double as ways to gain life to offset the life from this against aggro game one a little bit, as well as... Um, these cards are nice because while these cards aren't good against control, these are cards that are good against aggro that also aren't just blanks against control, which is really nice. I've got a couple of Thought Erasures here as discard spells 5 and 6 in the main deck. We've got some Brazen Borrowers and some Murderous Riders and some other creatures. And then we've got the Scarab God here. And honestly, the fact that I'm playing 4 Champion of the Wits... It's possible that we should just be on four Scarab Gods since we can, like, witch loot through extra copies in a pinch. Um, but this card's very powerful piece of top end. So 5-5 five, five for 5. Beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses life and you scry equal to the number of zombies you control. You can exile a creature in any graveyard and make a token of it, except it's a 4-4 four, four black zombie. And when this dies, it comes back to your hand at the beginning of the next end step, which is really sweet. Um, we've got things like Gonti and Hostage Taker that are great, um, that are great for, uh, bringing back with Scarab God, just have good enter the battlefield effects, and then Champion of Wits has the Eternalized mechanic, which lets you exile this from your graveyard and bring it back into play as a 4-4. So, notably, when you Eternalize this, you get to draw 4, discard 2, so it generates card advantage on the Eternalize. The mana base, because we're playing 2 colors, we've got 12 blue black duels here with 4 Fetid Pools, we've got a couple of Field of Rune, and then 4 Castle Locked Wayne here. Do you board out Thought Seize against Aggro, someone asked. So it depends on the aggressive deck. So against like Mono Red or Grohl Aggro, I would be inclined to board Thought Seize out because those decks tend to have a lot of redundant pieces. Against um, things like the Blue White Enchantments deck, where they tend to be a wrong half deck, where they need both creatures and and enchantments to put on those creatures. I like leaving Thought Seize in because you're more likely to catch them with their pants down, so to speak. Tokens do have names, Thorbrand, yes. It is a copy of the creature that you are that you're making. It'll, it'll be interesting to see. So Scarab God was a real powerhouse in standard back in its day. That being said, this historic as a format is a much higher power level than the standard format that Scarab God was a real threat in. So it'll be interesting to see if Scarab God can keep up with what's going on in this format. Um, Gosh. If they're a control deck, this hand is fine. If they're an aggro deck, we're going to get run down. And again, these are just like the hands you keep with mid-range decks sometimes. Like, you just like, okay, this hand is good against one thing. We're going to die against another. And then they're playing the other thing and you just die. This is like how magic works, unfortunately. There's Honestly, I think there's a real question to just conceding here. Yeah, if I don't, if I don't draw an untapped land on one, I think I might concede. All right, we'll play. So you're saying, so you're saying there's a chance. Uh, blah, blah. If you do do the raid sponsorship, you can bump a deck in the queue as a thank you. So if you haven't done, you haven't engaged in that sponsorship before, you can still get a little bit of a reward or a thank you for helping me out. Man, Chieftain is scary, but Chain Whirler attacks through my champions and my Gonti. That's tough. I think it's Chain Whirler, and then try and find an untapped land so I can Champion of Wits and trade in combat. 
Hey, thanks for the prime support, Jake. I appreciate that. Please keep in mind, if you'd like to critique my play or lend advice, the why is more important than doing so quickly. So, especially if you're going to tell me I should make a play that's different than I'm currently making, you should include Jeff. I think you should make this other play, and this is why. Help me learn. Educate me. Don't just tell me I'm wrong. We could definitely die here at Amuxus or something off the top, but we're in route to stabilization here. Maybe you want the Psycho Lands coming to Historic. I think outside of, like, two-color mid-ranger... And I know I'm saying this after... Hey, thanks for the support, Full Metal. I know I'm saying this after we've played two decks in a row that have a bunch of Psycho Lands in them, but I think in general, these, these Psycho Lands aren't going to be stellar. I think inexplicitly two-color mid-range at control decks that are in their colors, they're fine, but I don't expect them to be four of staples in most decks in the format. Okay, I just want more bodies to go wide with here. It makes field decks better, like, marginally. Sounds good, Roller Dude. I'll get that bumped up after the stream today. Just don't really have anything else to do here, unfortunately. It's very possible... Thank you for the title nudge. It's very possible that I should be on two Borrower and four Murderous Rider as hard removal. Are we dead? There's a good chance we're dead here. What's Eternalize? We can pay its Eternalize cost and put in a token into play that's a 4-4 copy of this. Oh, I could have Eternalized at the Prospector. That's a good call. Probably doesn't matter. I didn't I didn't see that line, though. Thanks for pointing it out. But Chupacabra. I think Chupacabra is worse than Hostage Taker, and I think I already have too many 4-drops. I think, I think I'd rather have Gontis and Hostage Shakers than Chupacabras. We're using Gonti over Thief of Sanity because Gonti is a card that's good against aggro, midrange, and control. Against midrange and control, it generates card advantage by drawing a card off their deck. Against aggro, it's a 2-3 with Death Touch that blocks. This always gets value when it comes into play. Thief of Sanity, if it just gets hit by a removal spell, it does nothing. It just dies. They could low roll here. Hey, that's like technically a roll, low roll. I want, I want value. I want consistent value, I guess I should say. Hey, that's a sweet animation. I like it. So we draw four, discard two now. Okay, there's a brick. With Skirt Prospector, I can uh I can reanimate something from their bin. So I have another Muxus on top. I wait, I wait to Chain Whirler, right? I think I just let this happen. It leaves them Skirt Prospector. 
Oh, I can reanimate Hostage Taker on Snoop. Oh, that's perfect. Good call. Good call. I forgot we had my graveyard too. So this is their draw step, so they can't currently cast this. I think they did, right? Because I'm going to animate two of their goblins next turn, one of which will give the other one haste. Yeah, I believe I believe they're dead. So we'll do that during my upkeep so I drain them extra. All right, well, I don't know if this deck's good, chat, but it's certainly great. So upkeep will pay eight, bring back Goblin Chieftain plus Goblin Chain Whirler, trigger the Chain Whirler, trigger the Scarab God. Yeah, Chain Whirler removes a blocker too. Yeah, nice. Nice. You love to see it, chat. You love to see it. All right, so Brazen Borrower doesn't seem particularly good in this matchup. Thought Erasures maybe a little bit on the slow side. I think I'm going to keep Thought Seize because of resource efficiency. Maybe I trim one. Like, they, they, they're they really good at peeling stuff off the top, so I think I'd rather have more spot removal and not all four Thought Seizes. I also probably don't want to draw two Thought Seizes early in this matchup. Is Lily for control matchups? Uh, control and mid range. We need we need to generate card advantage. What do you think about Massacre Girl over Language as a Wrath? You could reanimate with Scarab God, maybe. I don't know. The Language coming down on four is relevant. Um, Matt, language does not kill your Scarab God, whereas Massacre Girl is frequently going to. No. When they moved to open beta, they wiped everyone's accounts. You do not get the cards back that you had during during closed beta. You've gotta give gotta give Papa Watsi your money again. We opened, I opened 240 booster packs this morning and did not get a full set of the, and did not get a full set. <laughs> yeah, language also is the next one to get started is relevant. Although we've got a lot of one toughness things, right? Like we've got Meyer Tritons and stuff like that. All right, they've Leyline of the Voided Me. Sure, so this stops my Scarab Gods and my Eternalize. Not quite sure what's going on there at the interface, but it's going to let me cast my spells. Oh, those are my cards. Yeah, okay, how do I how do I see your cards? Okay, there. Okay. All right. Correct. This is not even fully stop scarab god cuz we can uh we can grab their stuff. supposed to leave this back rather than potentially trade damage there this can't play lands right you may cast one of them
You know, I'm gonna go ahead and kill the war chief now, so that's why they can't cast Mux it if they draw it. The battlefield slash card is really dark. I don't think they're any more dark than normal. Yeah, nice, nice little out of the void. How would blue white approach? It's fine. I'm not convinced that approach was strictly necessary, but some some iteration of blue white control will uh will be competitive. Yeah, I'm taking today, tomorrow, and Sunday off of Runeterra because Magic had a new set release. So we'll do a little bit of Runeterra Saturday afternoon, but today and tomorrow I'm focusing on Magic for the set release, and then Sunday is my monthly Magic tournament that I run for my subscribers. Does Leyline stop Ryder from going back in the deck? It does. One, one question that I'm not sure on, looking at this mana base, Fetid Pools versus uh, Blue-Black Temples is a potential question that I could have. Now, the upside of Fetid Pools is that it brings things like Drown Catacomb and Castle into play untapped, which I think makes Fetid Pools optimal. Having untapped lands consistently is a big deal. And, like, my deck is playing four Catacombs and four Black Castles. So I think, I think this is correct, but that's definitely something to think about. A split could even be right, like two temple, two temple, two fetid pools. Yeah, like, fetid pools cycles, but like, between Champion of Wits and Scarab God, our deck actually tends to be pretty mana hungry. So there, there isn't as much value in having, there isn't as much value in cycling a land when our deck can like spend seven, eight, nine mana in a turn. Like we have, we have payoffs for having that much mana. So like the number of times we're going to be cycling, it could also be right just like having these for fixing is fine. Like this is our only must come into play tap land in our deck. Now the question is, do I want to Brazen Borrower and attempt to block? Good chance they have things like Shock and Bone Crusher Giant. I'm going to go ahead and Gonti here and see if we can peel a removal spell off their deck. Unfortunately, this is a matchup where our Death Touch blockers are not particularly good because my opponent has a lot of evasive threats. They did fix best of three. The best of three bug was fixed within the first hour. Credit where credit is due. just champion of witsing here with this in exile waiting to be cast and like scarab god too i'd like to try and hit my fifth land this can also help shift us into some more interaction potentially although i don't have a ton of interaction game one as expected lots of interaction on their part Four four is pretty big. Hostage Shaker would have been a decent pickup there. No, I think Hostage Shaker is much better than Ravenous Chupacabra in a format where um I think Hostage Shaker is much better than Ravenous Chupacabra in a format where the enchantments deck is one of the best aggro decks in the format. <laughs> Yep. Yep.
Mm, I mean, I keep some of these. These don't die to shock, and they, they consistently gain me life. These effects are a little are a little slow. Maybe we just cut the scarab gods. If I worked on Coco Elves at all. No, if the deck list isn't in the queue, I haven't worked on it. I wonder if uh, people, I see people talking about Heartless Act versus uh, versus the Sprite Dragon. There's a chance that um, Heartless Act is worse than Cast Down as two mana removal. Oh, you know what I should probably be playing? I should probably play, we should probably play Eliminate in this deck, huh? What do we, what do we think of that? That should probably be the Heartless Act of the board. I'm still, still that, that card's not on my, my list of things to reach for just yet. No blocks here. They might they might still just stomp this to put minus counters on it. It's very it's very possible I should have disfigured this on turn one. Are we playing against Feather? No, are we playing against Blue Red Prowess? I think this is a win for me overall, this exchange. This getting Mystic Disputed feels a little bad. Gosh, Scarab God gets Mystic Disputed too. Just an off steal. That, that Aetherborn is going to chump block a Bone Crusher Giant at some point. And he's going to be great. No, I don't want a Hostage Shaker my own creature. Definitely want to make them have a 3 damage spell here. You got it. Nailed it. Sure. I think I thought season one, so that way I could try and take their second threat. No Gearhogs. Gearhogs were Kaladesh, right? They were never in Amonkhet? I know people were used to them being legal together, but like... When are we supposed to get Kaladesh? It's not currently on the roadmap. 
You don't have to play your instant speed spells at instant speed, chat. Kill them all, they're, kill them all they got nothing. There's only one good gear hulk anyways? No, that's not true. I think all of them but the red one could potentially see play, and even the red one has some good meme potential. I wouldn't be surprised if we get gear hulks and pioneer masters this fall. Seemed like that could be a reasonable inclusion. Strike, strike me down. Happy to see that get burned on that while I'm sitting on hostage shaker in hand. Show me all secrets. I think I'd rather do this than Heartless Act this. Want to try and use my hostage shaker to add pressure to the board, ideally. Alright, so far, so far, so good for blue black mid-range. Mid-range and my magic? Say what? I think I still want Eliminate rather than Heartless Act in the sideboard. I think that's probably a better piece of removal overall. What do we think? This might also be too many Lilianas. I keep three pieces about removal on the sideboard. I really don't like losing to aggro. Please remember, if you're going to make a card recommendation, you don't make a constructive and useful card recommendation, you're going to get a quick break. If you're not sure how to make a constructive and useful card recommendation, exclamation point card rec will tell you how. I think I take Matron here, because this is like a proxy Muxus. Hey, Blazing Gunner. Thanks for checking out the raid sponsoring, playing through the tutorial. Drop me a DM here on Twitch and let me know if you'd like a sub gifted to your channel or to bump something in the queue. Appreciate that. <laughs> God bless Roller Dude. Anyone know if Cassidy the Adventure half of Hostager? It does, Delic, but once your card goes on an adventure, you won't be able to cast it in the creature half from adventure unless you have the right color of mana. Is Goblins just that good where it is playable in best of three? I don't think the Goblins deck is very good, no. In my in my experience, the Goblins deck has very two or ten gameplay. When it wins, it wins by a lot, and when it loses, it loses by a lot. Like, Muxus is definitely a big feel-bad card. It can blow people out. But the average draw out of goblins, when you interact with it, tends to fall apart a little bit, in my experience. You get to cast the adventure if you stomp with their bone crusher. Did I buy the new lands? I did not. Uh, I don't think Field of the Dead decks are actually that good, which is why there aren't copies of Feral and Plague in my sideboard.
if they become popular and we play against them a lot, I feel like they are a hard matchup. That could maybe change my opinion, but at a glance, I don't think they're currently very good in the format. Meyer Triton's kind of whatever. Are there Thoughtseize or Meyer Triton? Probably that. I think drawing more than one Thoughtseize per game is probably bad. I think this is a Disdainful Stroke matchup. Maybe it is. Like, all their, like, Cranko and Muxus are, like, the only cards I care about. I'd rather have those over the Meyer Triton, perhaps. Mm, that's true. Yeah, this build does have Ringleader in it. Ringleader, the Goblins build with Ringleader are going to be a lot better against our fair mid-range deck than the Goblins decks without Ringleader. So maybe that's the direction you want to build Goblins in. Like, I do know the, the more linear-focused builds of Goblins feel pretty mediocre. So maybe adding a little bit more consistency and longevity and grind to your deck's a better approach to it now. Goblins are insanely OP right now. Good timeout. Hats off. Hats off to the mod that beat me to that one. I think, Ca I think Cavern of Souls is a god-awful Magic the Gathering card that I hope never gets printed. I mean, I'm better off bidding Disfigure than Scarab God there. Scarab God helps take over the game. And Scarab God works through Cage. Yeah, it probably should have been Disfigure. How do you identify which matchups you board out Thoughtseize in? So Thoughtseize is at its best in matchups where your opponent needs a specific mix of cards or one key card to beat you. It's at its worst when your opponent's really pressuring your life total aggressively and they don't need a specific card. So for example, the only aggressive deck I would leave all my thought seizes in against are is blue white the blue white enchantments deck. What was in their hands? Not lands. Better than expected, Kaker. They went to six. Thanks for the 12 months, Kicker. Let's draw some lands here and be on our way. Okie doke. Five worst cards in Magic the Gathering. I don't know. I don't like to put a lot of effort into questions like that. They're just like not very practical or useful or helpful to think about. Yep. I don't want to draw step stop because if I draw step stop and there's a Cranko on top of their deck, they get to make two goblins.
So I'm potentially losing a piece of information there, but I'm playing around a real downside. Oh, that's bad, because if they draw land, they can muxus me because of because of because of these things. Thanks for the 23 months, Fatal Roundhouse. I appreciate that. Welcome back. <laughs> I was excited about the thought seeds for a second, and then I looked up. Yeah, Grixis Control probably wants Cycle Lands. I know the iterations of Grixis Control that I had played on stream before, I was playing the Triumphs in as, like, cycling dual lands. Because there isn't a Grixis Triumph, but I was playing them as, like, blue, black, and red, black cycling lands. So I think the cycling lands that are strictly better than those in Grixis sound fine. A repo letter asking what happened. I drew a Thought Seize for their Muxus, and there was a Muxus sitting on top of their deck from their, uh, their two-drop. It could be that, you know, because our deck is more fair, it's going to have a harder time with goblins than some of the more linear decks. It's very possible that I want some Witch's Vengeance in my sideboard. Again, these interactive decks like this and the approach deck, they take some time to get right. You got to figure out exactly what people are playing, what answers you need to line up things into correctly. I was excited that they just cleared a land off the top of my deck and then we drew another land. Feels magic, man. If they don't have a Goblin Chain Whirler, we could be in this game. Hmm. I'm timing you out of the principle of calling Ember Cleave Old School. Because I am offended by that notion. This Twitch stream is pre-recorded in front of a live Twitch audience. We just trim a bunch of my X1s here. Bring in some more spot removal. Again, trimming some thought seas. I think I think you just like always cut the fourth against aggro. It could be right to board out all of these here, but I also like don't have cards I really love to bring it out of the board. Like if I if I had more cards on my sideboard that I thought were actively good in this matchup, I would consider trimming thought seas, but like I don't think any of these cards that are out here right now are really much better than this. So like if we're lucky a thought seas can like punch a hole in their curve a little bit can like snag an ember cleave that was going to kill us potentially tiger joe mtg thank you for the brand new prime support i appreciate that welcome to glandia ow kenobi thank you for the 14 months i appreciate you keeping me employed here folks welcome back Uh, yeah, Talrand, you're the, if you haven't installed it on your PC before and you make a new account, it, uh, it'll pop up when you finish the tutorial, the, the logo by the raid thing there. It takes about five to ten minutes, depending on how quickly you go through it. I say it's okay, double thought is a little bit awkward, but double thought on the play is better than on the draw. We can, like, thought seize into thought seize disfigure if they have a one drop on one, too, which is nice. Goblin Rune Blaster. Well, that's just rude. I think we're taking Annex and Rune Blaster here. And we'll plan to disfigure Bernie here. The set so far have been good today. I've enjoyed most of the Historic that we've played since they banned Tefri Time Raveler. And, um... I've enjoyed most of the sets that we've played since they banned Jeffrey Time Raveler, and the addition of Amonkhet Remastered, especially with cards like Collected Company and Thoughtseize, really feel like they give this format its own unique texture. For a long time, this format's definitely felt a lot like, um, 
had felt a lot like big standard. And the addition of Amenket really gives it its own feel, I, I think. Especially once rotation happens in the fall and then when Pioneer Masters happens after that. Um, I'm really, really excited to see what this format develops into. As someone who, like, only played Modern as a Magic format for a very long time, really excited to really have a, have a deep, uh, a deep card pool non-rotating format on this application. Yeah, I was gonna tempo this team kid for a turn. Shoe fly, don't bother me. Do 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 do. Be 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 do 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 do. I'm gonna light up the stage. Skewer the critics, maybe. Whatever it is, if they have another red spell, they're gonna be able to uh, make this big enough to dodge this. Unfortunately, Gonti's great. I love love Gonti. It's probably the best draw on their deck. Nah, probably not, Mercenary. I had someone submit a Tiny Bone build around to the deck queue, and I'm still not sure if that's something I'm willing to play or not. Need to, need to figure that out. Need to take a look at the card. I don't think that card's li likely very competitive. Was that a good draw? Please let me know in chat. Thank you. I think Aether Vial could be okay. I do. I think Cavern of Souls would be an awful addition to this format. I really don't like... I really don't like rendering counterspells unplayable against tribal decks. Counterspells are already medium against tribal decks because they play to the board quickly. I think Cavern sucks, but I think Aether Vial is a very reasonable card because Aether Vial has card disadvantage and it requires you to build your deck in specific ways that's interesting. Simic, Brian, thank you for the quarter of year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Gosh, I've learned today, chat, that apparently Magic Twitter is very upset by the term bootlicker. They are very, that is, it's very offensive, apparently, and I was, I was not aware. I thought, I thought that was a fair, a fairly PG take, but apparently, apparently it's real bad. I think I'm, I think I'm going to be greedy and bottom the land here. Like, I have three castable spells, and, like, they're all good, and Scarab got such a good finisher here. I'm going to play the Swamp. I'm not going to disfigure this right away, because they could have Robber of the Rich here. Decent pickup. Gets a double spell here. We're not drawing spells, but we're at least drawing... We're not drawing spells, but we're at least drawing... Uh, or lands, but at least drawing spells we can cast. Okay, and then we just, like, take Annex and then disfigure this. So they can't uh, light up the stage. Nobody's dunking on Syracuse today, so the Outrage Machine needed a new target. <laughs> He's gone, Jim. You got him. 
All right, sweet. Let's just get some running lands for Scarab God, huh? This is a 5-5, so like nice Lava Coil. Hey, right, just like we drew it up. Need to dodge land shock here. Scarab God's been reasonable so far. Feels like a decent finisher. Honestly, it might be right to go up to four since we have uh, the three drop that draws and discards. My friend. Yeah, we're going to get to take the Robber of the Rich during my upkeep. And smack them for nine and close out real quick. Yep. You'll, you'll frequently, if you don't have a much better play, want to uh, activate your Scarab God during your upkeep so you can get an extra zombie when you scry. Also, with haste, it's great as well. People people have told me Scarab God did have an animation in the beta. I, I would assume... I would assume that... Um, I would assume that part of the reason why Kaladesh and Amonkhet didn't immediately, um, didn't immediately come to Arena is that there was some kind of code base refactoring that happened behind the scenes with Arena, and they can't just reuse all of that. So, like, I would, I would assume that, like, that includes, like, the animations and stuff that were associated with those cards. Because there's, there's been a lot of people that don't seem to really understand how software works that, like... They assume that, like, because they existed in the beta, people should be able to just, like, copy-post. Copy-paste things and just, like, have it work, and that's just, like, not reality of these things. So, to the comment that that AHK created a rather fun format, um, while I'm optimistic that that's going to be the case, I would heavily discourage you from acting like we definitely know what the format's going to look like right now. Like, formats always look fun and healthy and interesting day one there's always new things to explore and unsolved formats always are like you know christmas morning now like you know a month from now or six weeks from now if it's still great that's awesome and i'm glad that it was added but like you know even even six weeks from now si six weeks from now this format's going to be different again right because there's a uh, the new standard rotation happens a month from now right this september 15th i think is the the set release so when someone correct that date if it's wrong, please. But I believe I believe it's September 15th. Wow, that's rude. Look at the way they massacred my boy. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's part of the reason why I'm so excited for historic in general, is that um I don't want to take Uro there, because if I cast Uro, it'll go to their graveyard. Is it the 17th for Arena? I'm pretty sure it's the 15th for Arena. The 15th is a Thursday, right? Their sets release on Thursdays? No, the 17th is Thursday. You're right. 17. Thank you for the correction. Calendars and stuff. We've lost. I've got a Murderous Rider right here. Hour of Promise can get Black Castle. So we're going to take their Hour of Promise. Ugin and things like him. It might be wrong to not have four Murderous Riders in here. Okay, now this is getting them to Field of the Dead. So like... 
good chance we're dead here. Oh, we've not played Collect Company yet. It's only our second deck. If decks don't suck, I tend to play them for like an hour and a half to two hours, so it takes a little bit of time. Yeah, we're not we're not just dead yet. We can't beat another Ugin, we can't beat an Ulamog, but this field of the dead is looking alright, and we're dead. So I've been pretty adamant that Field of the Dead did not feel like a problem in this format up until this point. There is a good chance that this card changes that. There is a very good chance that with the addition of Hour of Promise, Field of the Dead is no longer okay in this format. That's something that's going to take some time to figure out. We need to play games with it and get a feel for it. But if, if it's not okay, that card's likely, likely part of the reason why. So I get to block three of these. They have 13. I block three. I go to 11. I'm taking 20, so we're dead. Yeah, I think I think there's a chance that our prowess puts the puts them pretty far over the top. Definitely want Disdainful Stroke. I think I'm in for the discard spells here. This notably does not clean up after Field of the Dead. Awkward. That That's true, Max the Penguin, that the deck that we are currently playing is definitely, our archetype is definitely one of Field of the Dead's better matchups. That being said, Field of the Dead having way more consistent access to not just single field, but double field means that it's hard, it's hard matchups like aggressive decks get better because it's going to be able to flood. Did you see how quickly my opponent generated zombies there? Like that beats aggressive decks too. I don't think Virulent Plague is very good in this matchup because the opponent has lots of Ulamogs. Likely, likely four. Or Ugin. Ugin. Probably have Ugin and Ulamog. They probably have four Ugins and some number of Ulamog. Mass Massacre Worm could be okay because it does literally kill them. Six mana is a little bit expensive, but I, I could see that being fine. That's a tool we could explore. And again, like, like we've talked about a lot so far today, this is an interactive mid-range deck. Like, we've been playing this deck for almost an hour now. This is our first of half a dozen matches that we've played against Field of the Dead. There's no guarantee that Field of the Dead's going to be popular or good. If it is, we have tools we can try and reach for. PVD, thank you for the 11 months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah, traditionally speaking, interactive bid range tends to be very bad against big mana decks, which is what this definitely is. Veto's been great today. Yeah, I would assume that's the case. Which which is vengeance isn't that great against Field of the Dead. Which is vengeance is good if you're like killing them the following turn. But with Hour of Promise, they're gonna have multiple fields in play consistently, which means they're gonna rebuild from something like a which is vengeance very quickly. Now Massacre Worm is potentially a good choice because Massacre Worm uh, kills the opponent with its trigger frequently. Right? You don't need as much pressure to pair with it. Uh, Elspeth Conquers Death isn't a particularly popular card in this format either. Yeah, yeah, the fact that Worm revives a Scarab God is definitely something that's worth considering. Big, big agree. Double, double Borrower here could be very good.
cheeky gem pump leaders. I think cheeky gem pump leaders are much worse than playing, uh, much worse than playing something like Massacre Worm. They could have a sweeper, but Scarab God comes back to my hand, so I'm just going to jam Scarab God here. They could have a counter spell, which would feel bad, but if they're just on a sweeper, it's like not a big deal. We have not Scarab God got it in a row yet. Green Speed Glorybringer is good in this format. I mean, I'm definitely going to play Glorybringer at some point. I don't know if it's good. Five mana, five mana threats are a hard sell. Glorybringer like impacts the board really nicely the turn you play it, so it could be okay, but that's definitely one that I need to see played with more than anything first. They're still playing Shatter instead of Wrath of God. Fist pump. One, one magical card, please. Hmm, this is probably wrong. And this is the other problem too, right? Like, but people talking about problems that we're having, like I, I know that we we like played through double Ugin in the first game. That's way more than the exception than the rule. So like while there's a lot of cards you could bring in to explicitly beat up on just the zombies, the zombies in conjunction with the other Ugins, uh, with the other ramp payoffs that they have, I think there's a good chance that if you want to play a fair mid-range deck like what we're playing right now, you just have to punt the field of the dead matchup. I think even with Massacre Worms and Virulent Plagues or any other specific targeted hate, you're still going to lose that ramp matchup more than you're winning, and you should just punt it. I think if you want to play a mid-range deck that has a decent chance against ramp, I would recommend the Veto Rock deck that's up on my website. It is a mid-range deck with a two-card combo finish that's very reasonable. So another another deck that's gonna gain thought seize in this format, which is nice. The Eve of Sanity looks good against those decks, right? Rather than you telling me you're right, instead next time try telling me uh why you're right. Don't put the onus on me to be descriptive for you. Instead, say, Jeff, this seems good, this is why. And then explain, and we can have a conversation about it, instead of expecting me to just lecture you. Who? <sighs> Crokey's just cast Coco in his 26 creature deck in Mist. Yeah, the people, the people that told you you can play Collected Company with 26 creatures, they want to see you fail, chat. I, I love you. Put 20, put 32 creatures in your Collected Company deck. Heck, put 34 creatures in your Collected Company deck. More is better. More, more is better. I think I'm keeping the lands. The other, the other thing people frequently do that I think is incredibly wrong and silly is that people will look at their 26 creature collected company deck and one of the 26 creatures they'll be looking at is Lana War Elves. They'll be like, okay, I've got 32 hits in my, I've got 26 hits in my deck, but like four to eight of them are mana dorks. It's like, well, if you think about it, a mana dork doesn't really count as a hit with my collected company, right? Like, when I hit Land War Elves with my collected company, I am not happy about it. Sure, I believe that Kroki's rejected the math. I think, and again, it, it depends on... I think this matchup seems good, they say, before we die to Muxus. Um... I think it depends a lot on what you deem an acceptable rate of failure. 
Like, what some people will tolerate as a rate of failure is different than what other people will. Like, I actually, if I recall correctly, Frank Karsten had like 26 creatures or 26 hits listed as an appropriate number when he wrote an article on... When he wrote an article on, um... On... Uh, what's it called? On the, uh... Little, uh, collected company. And I disagree with his conclusions and what he finds to be an acceptable rate of failure and missing. I think what the amount of... the As frequent as his numbers tolerated your four mana card not doing a whole lot which were too high. When you board the Liana in against control and other mid-range decks. Which there might not be enough of in this format. She might be a bad sideboard slot because of that. Twenty-two was the bare minimum to get two creatures seventy-four percent of the time. Sure, but like, is your card being bad one in four times acceptable? It's not, right? Like, if you th if you think about it, like you you have to put it in perspective of how often am I okay with this card being bad? And like, if you're building your deck around that card, you want it to be good way more often than three times out of four. In my opinion. That's, that's subjective. Feel free to disagree. But I think, I think 34% is not appropriate. Uh, please drop me a DM, Razor Ox. And I will take care of gifting subs at the end of the stream today. I'm gonna keep Hostage Taker in bottom of the third land, actually. Need a little bit of actual action. Take their Proxy Muxus. Always Razor. By the way, just to, to point it out, I timed someone out in chat that said some crappy things about how they feel about Crokies and how he manages his stuff and things. Like, if you don't like a content creator, just change the channel. There's there's no need to come into my chat or any other space or complain about Crokies or any other magic streamer. There's lots of great people making lots of great stuff. No, no amount of content is going to appeal to everyone. Just, you know, turn turn the TV off and change the channel if it's not for you. Yeah, these these ringleaders have been really brutal. The first time we played against goblins felt kind of okay. These last couple have felt bad. Jeff, this is the internet. We can't be reasonable. I'm gonna try and make you. I'm gonna try my best to make you. Um, the treasure hunt is, or, or just super 
second here. Uh, treasure Hunt is... I guess, I guess if they have nothing, we could stroke Krenko and be okay. Maybe. It feels real bad. Uh, treasure treasure Flare. Zombie Infestation doesn't make sense, but Zenith Flare is good. If you look under the meme category on my website for Historic Decks, there's a, a Treasure Flare deck up there. Probably just dying to fair beatdowns here. Yeah. <sighs> my mid-range deck has felt worse the more that I've played it, chat. Believe it or not. Like, I like, I like the idea of Massacre Worm in general, but it's probably just too slow against the Goblins deck, right? Hey, I appreciate the feedback, Merc. And in fact, appreciating feedback is why I do things like this Observe. Let's try a couple of Witch's Vengeance and, like, a third Graft Digger's Cage, perhaps, but the Goblins matchup has not felt great. That's because mid-range isn't one of the three golden archetypes combo, ramp, or ramp combo. You're not, you're not wrong. I do not intend to try Torrent of Hailfire and Mono Black Control. No, I think that card's a trap. I think you're frequently better off with a different payoff. Things like the Ultimatums are way more appealing. No, the tokens deck felt like it was doing something similar to goblins with less resiliency. It fell off and didn't feel didn't feel appropriate enough. Spe speaky, speak of the devil and it will appear, I suppose. Sweet memes are made of these. Who am I to disagree? I'm gonna bring in Witch's Vengeance just in case they're playing. They're not playing Zenith Flare and they're playing uh They're playing Zombie Infestation. Alright, we're gonna mulligan for Thoughtseize. Do I keep this? Assuming I'm gonna hit black? How many black sources am I on? Not a lot of untapped. I think I've only got like 10 untapped. I think we mulligan. King of Litton, thanks for the third of year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Okay. They are going to get to Mystic Sanctuary, their thing back on top of their deck next turn. Yeah, they've got they've got two sanctuaries here as redraws. 
The look of their mana base makes me think they're on zombie infestation. Like the Zenith Flare build looks way different. Mm, could be an Oracle if that's a build. Okay. So is this lethal? I mean, your collected company is a very high variance card, chat. You're gonna brick with your collected companies even in games where your deck's built appropriately. That's just that's just how the game works. How's Gonti been in a store? I think Gonti's super playable. I think it's uh one of the one of those pretty rare cards that's just like always reasonable. Just like the stat line and death touch is fine against aggro and the card advantage is good against mid region control and like passable against combo. Worries, Tiger. That's why we have a card rick command. I cut people that are subs a lot more slack than non-subs. Because y'all pay my bills. We're keeping this. Probably bottom the redundant Gonti. You brick more to Rito when the shuffler's rigged. <laughs> the shuffler's as rigged as the earth is flat, Suskind. The truth is out there, sheeple. Wake up. Another Goblins matchup. Burn deck. Yeah! Scorch me, daddy. Yeah, Bernie Sanders. Sun Scorch Desert Enable Spectacle. Yeah. Yeah, okay. My face is the place, chat. My face is the place. We're a wizard, Harry. I think I should field over in them. Is that a good play? Sunscorch Desert, uh, Goblin Chain Whirler Tor Brand is like big mood. My our, our opponent's dojo does not contain fear chat. They ain't scared. They ain't scared of nothing. This is my two through with life link. As you will. Yeah, you get what you deserve. Bricks. 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 I must say your in-game references to pop culture would keep me coming back. Listen, I didn't watch I didn't listen to a lot of bad music and watch a lot of terrible TV in the 90s to not use that information. Yeah, it's very, very important. The culture of my people. I like going to three thought seas. I think I trim brazen bar works that dies to goblin chain whirler. I don't know if this is a witch's vengeance matchup, but if they want my cheap spot removal. 
Yeah, you should time out people in chat who attack my opponent's deck building in a non-constructed manner. I expect I expect people in chat to treat my opponent's decks with the same respect I expect them to treat mine, which means you're allowed to be critical, but only if you're constructive about it. Explain why a decision someone has made is bad. Help them help them learn. What is your favorite absolute trash TV show from the 90s? So like, I am I was born in 91, so like a lot of the TV that I, I watch and remember especially is from like the early 2000s, maybe late 90s. Man, this mana base. Does... Does Malcolm in the Middle count as trash TV or a classic? I feel like that one can err on the side of a classic, right? Wait, who called? All right, you know what? I've decided Malcolm in the Middle is a classic and I will not be accepting other answers at this time. Democracy has spoken. All right, spells, 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 spells. All right, yep, we take those. Malcolm in the Middle was so misunderstood when I was watching as as a kid, as a parent. I realized the parents were the real heroes. Well, that's that's why it's such a great show, right? Because like the your perspective that you view it from changes as you get older, right? Things, things like that that speak to different people in different ways. No, we're a creature deck, King Eddie. My deck's got 28 creatures in the main. Hey, Grizzle Fluff. Thanks for taking the time to check out the raid sponsor and play through the tutorial. I appreciate the support. Drop me a DM on Twitch and let me know if you'd like a sub gift to the channel or to bump something in the queue. Thanks, everybody, for dropping in here today, by the way. There's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for just spending part of your day here with us in Hoaglandia. If you're a new viewer, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream Magic and other card games full-time here on Twitch. You play pretty much all constructed on this channel. You can always find my schedule on my website here. Usually I do a little bit of Magic content at least every day. If you're someone who's enjoying Historic and is loving brewing with this latest set, you should join us on Sunday for the next Hoaglandia Open. I think we currently have about 70 people signed up for that event. Looking forward to see how many we end up with. Either way, regardless of how many we end up signed up with, it'll be a fun day for all. I think I'm just playing this out as a 2-3. I think Hoagland is Dutch for like the Highlands or something like that. I don't know. I'm like, I'm like a fourth or fifth generation removed from people, my family immigrating to America. So like... I don't really have any ties to the Netherlands or anything like that. My background is a giant mix of things. My grandfather on my mother's side was 100% Italian, but other than other than him, you can't really. There's a lot of a lot of things from a lot of different origins. Because contrary to what some people and some political parties would have you believe, America is a country that was built on immigration, and it's a good thing for us. We are dead there. You don't have to play in the Oaklandia Open. Well, good thing you're going to have three days of me streaming potentially sweet historic decks to find something to pick from. It looks like we're over 1,500 people, so I think if we stay over 1,500 people... Through the end of the Mardu Cracks deck, I'm going to do a fourth deck today as well. Maybe a fifth.
Oh, this isn't stellar, but I think it's keepable. Aiden Neon, thanks for the half a year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I'm going to play Red Black Pyromancer before the open. And you can always see what decks I'm planning to play and the order in which I intend to play them by looking at the deck queue on my website. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate this here. I'm doing it now at sorcery speed, so that way they can't play a Wizard's Lightning at discount in response. Chain Whirler, please. Probably just a Doom Blade. Yeah, this card was banned in standard. Lol. Yeah, Cardboard Live. Let me refresh Cardboard Live again to see if they've updated. Usually they update pretty quickly. Not yet, unfortunately. Also, keep in mind, if you know the name of a card here from looking at it in chat, you can type exclamation point and then the card name in chat, and the bot will tell you what that card is called. Uh, I didn't include Supreme Will in the de in the approach deck we played earlier today. I'm a, I'm a more of a fan of building that kind of archetype as more of a tap-out control deck. That's rude. My assistants are painfully slow. We have not played against Hazard today, no. Oh, I guess my sequencing here is bad because now they get to kill this with the trigger. Uh, I promise you that the Amon Kit cards are on Stream Decker. Stream Decker is a piece of software that was built to work with Magic the Gathering Online, which is at all of these cards for a very long time. They are not present on Cardboard Live. You are correct, though. Ugh. Man, deserts make red good. My sequencing again sucks a little bit here. I don't think it really matters this time, though. Just need to hope that this frenzy stays experimental and doesn't become good. Yes, Eternalize comes back as a comes back as a four four, and Balm keeps the stat line. Denying us, denying us life game was very good there. I don't know. I felt I felt kind of underwhelmed by this deck. I feel like it went about. 
as I was expecting it to go. Um, I think mid-range just has like a really tough squeeze right now. Um, between hoping your answers line up against things like red and um, the different ramp decks going way up over the top of you. Scarab Gods of 5 5 for 5 is nice when it survives, but like between things like Brazen Borrower still running around the format, some of the aggressive decks, and like Elspeth Conquer's Death, and other things that just like go over the top of what you're doing, I feel like I would be surprised if this really becomes an overbearing format staple. Like, if you really love the card, I think it's probably workable and you can put it into something reasonable, but I think uh, all all things considered, I wouldn't be terribly surprised if uh, if this card doesn't really become a format staple on its own. We only had Field of the Dead once so far today. Decks like Field of the Dead are going to be harder to figure out how to build necessarily because they tend to be a little bit more interactive. So again, interactive decks like this and Field of the Dead and stuff like that are going to have a harder time getting their feet under them until the format develops and uh, matures the metagame a little bit. All right, at any rate, we're going to take a quick ad break while I get set up and get the client restart and flip over to the next one. When we get back, we are going to play some Mothra Solemnity combo. So we'll be back in just a few. I'll explain how the combo works. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere.